everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow to Dagmastics. We're back in the Volkswagen Mr. Euro Trash for uh, part two. So, for part one, we diagnosed the uh, no comm situation, missing power at the diagnostic bus module, and we found an unplugged fuel sending unit, fuel pump. Um, car ran fine. I took it for a test drive, runs great, right? But I'm like, well, still have that feeling we, what, what was the original problem that stuff was kind of built in by you know whoever tried to diagnose it the first time you know the fuse moved around and the fuel pump unplugged obviously that doesn't happen on its own so I left the car and about you know went back into town about half an hour later I get a call hey it's a crank no start again I'm like crap but the problem is back so let's do the real diagnosis now Come over here the next day, I made sure, I told the customer, is it still a no, no start? He's like, yep, it's a no start, I just tried it. I come here, it fires right up. Scan for codes, no new codes. This thing is possessed. So all we have is four codes in the TPMS, one code in the door for the window, and the radio. Everything else is perfect. So no DTCs in the engine electronics, and if you remember the last time the fuel pump was unplugged, it set a fuel pump circuit code. So it's smart enough to do that. Um, we have to recreate this problem because I don't want to keep driving over here. It's a one hour round trip uh, and have no results. So let's take it for a spin, park it, let it sit, try to recreate the fault. Hopefully it acts up. Well, I'm driving this thing around. It runs perfect. Look at our fuel pressures, uh, desired and actual. That was a hard shift. It's a DSG transmission. I think it might be uh, tuned a little on the performance side. Got some balls for a two liter. here in a straightaway.
I should have the owner try to start it up because it's not acting up for me. So just for kicks, we're doing a bi-directional test of the fuel pump. So fuel pump electronics, hit OK. And this thing will ramp up the duty cycle. And you can hear it spin. No problems with the circuit. The module is not too hot. I mean, I don't see any problems, but if there's a circuit problem, it would set a code. Easiest thing. All right, so we have something interesting. Start it. Blah. Excellent. So I didn't come over here for nothing. Let's uh, get back into the engine. And look at our fuel pressure data pids. So there's no DTCs. Data stream. So some something heated up and now it's not happy. So let's select all. Okay. Okay, so definitely actual pressure is lacking right now, so let's start it. Fuel pump duty cycle. Let's uh, let's go back. Come back in here. Let's do the actuation test again. So that pump is ramping up. You can hear it. That's good. Fifteen seconds. And done. All right, now let's go back to our data. And when it cranks, it actually loses the data stream, which is unfortunate. So that's that's definitely a problem. Kicking me out. So this is the original, original problem. We're lacking fuel pressure. So at least, at least we determined that, and it's not the low pressure pump because we fixed that. Mm-hmm. So we might have to do with the high pressure. The high pressure pumps. I'm gonna do a little research on that. See why it's not building pressure in the fuel system. Okay. So on the high pressure fuel pump, there is a two wire fuel pump regulator valve. So. I'm hooked up to the control wire with the Pico scope. I want to see what the computer is doing to that wire. So right now the, the key is on, engine's off, and you can see it's pulsing it to ground right here. Let's get a few pulses on the screen. It's kind of groups of six pulses. Let's start it up, see what happens. Okay, that was very cool. So let's zoom in here. So that's known good control. However, is that valve actually moving? 
it seems like we're not building, you know, high pressure on that high pressure fuel pump. So what we could do is maybe remove that valve and see if it's sticking. Um, we could try to energize it manually just briefly, see if it clicks. But <laughs> um, I don't really have any other ideas what would cause a low pressure intermittently uh, because when it works, it works great. So it's not like the high pressure fuel pumps worn out or leaking or you know the follower is bad. It works great until it just doesn't work at all. Like it doesn't build any fuel pressure. So that valve might be on its way out. I mean the car has a hundred thousand miles, so not wouldn't be too surprising for a high, you know, very precision uh, electrical piece to to just wear out mechanically because electrically it seems to be working fine. And do we see a pintle hump right here? So it's kind of like a fuel injector. It looks like it's there. So, but let's, uh, I just want to manually test it and see if we can hear the, hear it click under the hood. All right, so I'm just gonna basically tie in to here and ground this briefly just to hear it click. It clicks fine. But it's not building fuel pressure. That's the craziest thing. So just because it clicks doesn't mean that this part's doing you know doing what it should. We're just not building fuel pressure. That's that's a possibility. But when it's energized, the pressure should be higher. All right, I think we found our problem. Back to old school, regular analog fuel pressure gauge. Quick connect, plugs right in instead of the fuel line, so I'm just deadheading the pump. Whenever you uh, prime it, and now we're going to like 13 PSI. Yeah, that's not enough for the system it should be like 50 that's a problem that fuel pump is basically shot you can even hear it it's spinning but it's not like straining it's not building pressure that's our problem that's our original problem so three hour three hour diag on this one uh, we can pop the pump out see what it looks like but it just needs a new low pressure pump good thing it's not the high pressure pump because that would be a lot more expensive I'm assuming so let's take it out maybe there's some silly hose disconnect I don't know but it's building some pressure but not nearly enough so I also want to measure the current that the pump is drawing right now put the key in prime it about 5 amps. We're now going about 15 psi. Let's try again. We can also try to squeeze the bleed valve and see if it's pumping air. Alright, so here we go with the test. Now, for some reason, it won't let me do the bi directional, but we can do uh, just a key on. It's just either a weak pump or it's sucking in air and cavitating. Well, this is a mess. <clears throat> Taking the fuel pump uh, you know, off, it just like, disintegrated. Oh man. So it has this... Um, extra pipe that goes to the other side of the tank that's like the uh, little injector pump to tra like a transfer pump and then I think this is the main pressure line and then it has two of these 
that's probably just to keep the sending unit down. It has this big spring on it. But, like, what is this supposed to be connected to? Is that like the fuel pressure regulator? What's that guy? Either way, if we can't put this back together, he's going to need a new one. All right, so here's our fuel pressure gauge. Let's pop in the key, do the prime. Dude, we're back in business. It went up to 90. Wow. Try that again. It's holding. Now again, it's hard for me to guarantee that that's gonna last because if it like disconnected on its own once, yeah. but there's a chance. So I'd say don't take it too far from home. Just keep running it. And if it lasts like, you know, two full tank fulls, then just, just leave it, just let it, let it go. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So that would be no parts required. That's our favorite type of fix, at least for now. So let's relieve the pressure. Okay, we'll set the camera up right here. We want to do a flow test too. Yeah, that was good, good pressure in there, so. Instant. And there's no more. You can actually hear the pump. Yeah. It's like it sounds different. It builds. It, yeah, exactly. It, exactly. So now let's uh let's do a current measurement on it. I measured it before it was only five amps. Now it should be close to ten or something if it's actually pumping good. So let's uh, watch the gauge. And key on. There we go, nine amps. Much better. So I think this car's fixed. All right, moment of truth here. Everything's plugged back in. Should fire right up once it builds fuel pressure. Stay running. Nice. Let's go right back into our engine, check our fuel pressure, make sure that's good. No DTCs, amazing. You would think it would set a low pressure code, but we have to use our intuition on this one. So, fuel. Select all, okay. Yep, we're back to 40 bar. Take it for another spin just to make sure, but I think we're all done, so thanks a lot for watching. It was a good one. Three separate issues, finally nailed it. Uh, hopefully this is a long-term fix. The owner will keep me updated, and that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.